Uh, we are in Baden-Baden with uh, Mrs. Nicola Rautmann, market executive for Austria and CE, and uh, Mr. Christian Kreutzer, head market uh, underwriting CE within Swiss CRE Europe, uh, to discuss about uh, the latest development uh, in this year and uh, also about uh, the conclusion of uh, the meetings that Swiss CRE had here in Baden-Baden. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Uh, first of all, um, 2017 might uh, be considered uh, the most expensive year for the insurance and reinsurance industry. Uh, how would you characterize the last uh, 11 months for the market in general and for Swiss Re? So let me start with the market in general first. Um, as you rightly said, it's really one of the most expensive years we ever saw. And uh, that's because it's not just one big loss, but we had seen several losses, uh, three hurricanes, um, but also two earthquakes in Mexico. We had seen uh, in Australia also a storm beforehand, and then now the bush fires in California, and that all comes together in one year. So, and all those losses also are part of Swiss Re's uh, loss scale. So it's not just for the market, but also we participate. We are one of the market leaders. So we are also having the claims. Uh, also, uh, there were, uh, it was a very costly year for the reinsurance industry. Uh, we see that there is a lot of capacity, although the return uh, on capital is quite low. Uh, how uh, can we explain this uh, much quantity of capacity? Yeah, that, it's an interesting question, as you, you should uh, ask we all the our peers. But uh, maybe one guess is, um, so when you look at uh, where capital is invested, it's always depending also what other investments are available at that point in time. So for sure, um, the interest rate environment plays a role from my perspective. Uh, so maybe even a crucial role. Uh, so and then also the expectation of, of shareholders. And what we are seeing, so there had not been so much losses until now and so the real and so what was earned and uh, really in um, or was accounted for was maybe above what was expected and that for the benefit then of, of those shareholders Christian want to add something um, well I guess reinsurance um, as such is by definition a, a global business right so clients benefit from the diversification reinsurance balance sheets offer and the reinsurance capacity provides to them. Uh, this goes for good years, but this obviously also goes for years where the loss development is less favorable. So in that sense, the impact of those events needs to be seen in the impact on the entire reinsurance capital base. And as we are in Baden-Baden and you probably had many, many meetings with uh, your clients, uh, what can you tell us about the impact of uh, the losses that we uh, talked before on the renewal rates? Can we consider that we are at the end of a soft market or something like this? It's quite difficult to say for a reinsurer and predict the rates which are coming, so we can just talk for ourselves. Um, so it's, it's definitely the case uh, when we look at our own shareholder base, so that when we go back in time, maybe last year, Baden-Baden, um, that our shareholder, we had no losses. And uh, so we were talking about, so when is this event to happen which causes really this change? Now we had those events and now our shareholders are really expecting from us something is happening. And that's what we want to pursue. I'm not sure what, what the others are doing, so I cannot tell, but um, definitely from our end we will pursue that route. And it's important for us uh, to re uh, we are more or less forced to go back to our shareholders with more than what we had before. Maybe just adding from the from the daily conversations we have here with clients. I mean, it's important to understand that we always start with the individual portfolio. Uh, so we look into how have exposures developed, how have losses on the individual portfolio developed, and that's the first start, right? So we look into what is the rate, what is the pricing we need to achieve in order to provide capacity in 2018 for a given book. In addition, we obviously will also look into how have prices developed on certain programs over the last couple of years. Um, it's no secret that some companies have utilized 
the market conditions to a larger extent than others. So in other words, the current pricing quality of the book in comparison to where we would see a sustainable price level um, has certain deviations. And that's another element which we need to take into account when we now talk about the terms and conditions for the next year. One, one figure. And, and you're looking for the figure. Uh, I, I can tell you when, when I look at our own portfolio, so Swiss Re, CEE, so what, and you have taken the last five years, so and looking at our combined ratio, it uh, deteriorated by 10%. So that's what happened from our own perspective. Okay. Thank you. Uh, coming back to the catastrophic events, uh, they showed us that even developed countries like US have a huge protection gap. Uh, what are Swiss Re solutions for closing the, prote uh, the uh, protection gap and uh, do you consider that these solutions are also suitable for the CE markets, which also have a penetration rate quite low for? So, so Christian is really an expert on the solution side, but just as a first uh, glance on it, so definitely protection gap is one of the most important topics from our uh, perspective. It's, it's not just now, but something which we also uh, pursued as in the past. Um, see countries, uh, you're writing them so, also there we see the protection gap, like in US. We believe we have uh, solutions to offer and for those ones to describe in a bit, uh, I, I would like to hand over to Christian because you really can bring a bit more detail and flesh to the bone. No, thank you, Nicola. I mean, um, just for you to know, I mean, I've spent the last two years uh, working in Asia for Swiss Re. And I mean, actually, when you, when you look into markets, it's pretty much a common global feature which we see in the, f in, in the sense that the injured loss is in quite many cases a fraction of the economic loss. So what we need to think about first is what is what are the reasons why people are not purchasing insurance for their protection needs. And there are different elements, different aspects, but what you can see as common denominators basically in all parts of the world is it's the affordability of the insurance product. Um, I mean, depending on, on, on average income in certain countries, an insurance premium is a considerable expenditure, uh, so that's one feature. The second feature which we also see is the complexity of the traditional insurance products which markets offer in the space, for example, of property insurance. Uh, and if you think about being a broker and you probably need to spend 10 minutes to sell a motor insurance policy, but you might need one hour to sell a property policy, whilst your commission is the same, it clearly tells where insurance agents and brokers will put priority. So what we as an in industry need to think about is how can we make our products easier to understand for our customers and also affordable. Those are key, com uh, key aspects and how can we make the society aware of the risk positions they are exposed to. Mm. And I think in that sense, Central Eastern Europe is a region which has many elements where exactly those questions need to be addressed uh, with clients. Um, in terms of affordability, microinsurance products um, are a solution. I mean, just to briefly explain what we mean with microinsurance, it's quite often we talk about um, relatively small amounts of money which are needed to provide a recovery from the impacts of a loss. And a full-scale insurance product is sometimes simply providing too much of compensation. So scaling down the product to the actual needs of the private consumer in a certain country is one way how to overcome the obstacle of affordability. Uh, so, do you consider that microinsurance or parametric insurance are, uh, can be successfully implemented in the CE region? But what about the regulators in the region? Are they accepting this type of products? Do you know about discussion in this area? Exactly, as you mentioned, there's, there's discussion in this direction and uh, actually not all regulators uh, are seeing uh, or looking at that the same, so there are different perspectives. Um, one key thing which is there is uh, the base, basis risk. Basis, just to describe, it's, it's, so when we offer an insurance product, 
is it really exactly matching uh, the loss which is then occurring? And when you talk about indexation or uh, parametric products, you might have a difference between what the index says and what the uh, insured is suffering as a claim. But I think there are now ways where those two uh, topics uh, can come closer to each other because of also modern technology. So my long answer to your question is, I think uh, it can be really considered as insurance if we really are able to close this basis risk in a good way. Absolutely. And, 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 and I guess an important aspect uh, when you talk about the regulator, when you talk about all stakeholders is be transparent about such solutions. Um, talk to the market at conferences. I mean, um, I have been at, at XPRIM's conference uh, last week in, Buc in, in Bucharest speaking about how parametric insurance products could help the Romanian market to overcome the protection gap related to earthquake and the earthquake exposures. Offer a dialogue to associations, offer a dialogue to regulators and find a common solution with all stakeholders involved. That's very much the process um, we apply to that. Okay. Just one more word. I think it's a process. It's not that we come with the product and that's it. Okay. So it's a way and you are on a way to success. With the insurance companies and with the original insurance. Okay. Uh, coming back to another topic, InsurTech, uh, this is one of the most uh, important trends in the industry at the moment, most uh, debated, so to say. Uh, what are the Swiss solutions for the CE companies in this direction? Christian, this i leave you the first to answer. <laughs> Uh, again, when you when you talk about innovation, when you talk about solutions, it's never a copy-paste exercise. So we really need to understand the mechanisms of each and every country and each and every market. But one thing is for sure, if you want to close the protection gap with a product, with an insurance solution, you need to have a broad reach out to potential customers. And this is exactly um, the aspect where InsurTech comes in, providing an example platforms where we can reach out to a large part of the society with a proposal for an insurance product, making it easier for people to access the capacity and to access a solution for their specific needs. Um, so when we talk about solutions and we talk about products, the product design is one part, but we also spend a significant effort on finding the right distribution network. And when you look into Central East in Europe and the affinity of people, for example, towards the internet, then it's obvious that solutions with a broad reach out could be based with internet based solutions. Maybe one thing uh, going a bit away from the retail side. So uh, also talking about InsurTech, one really co concrete example is Acro Insurance. So, and, and there we're not talking about the original customer, but we're talking about uh, also a bit por uh, portion of the economy. And exactly there we have a specific product um, which is uh, using app and, and internet te technology and using re weather data. So so. That's quite developed and it's there and it would go exactly in this direction of Intratech. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, in order to close this interview, can you give us, let's say, a, a conclusion uh, uh, following this uh, few days in Baden-Baden, mainly for your clients in the sea region? It's not, uh, we have still have a day to go tomorrow, but um, my conclusion is really, um, so we should be quite proud as an industry that uh, we can sustain such big losses and still we offer all the capacity needed. So um, and we can as an industry we can really still provide what our clients expect from us um, as reinsurance but all the insurance companies as towards their clients. Um, but that's maybe a bit more expensive than it was one year ago because we had suffered this loss. Okay. And that's my conclusion. And I just put it in one sentence uh, to our clients. I mean, let us sit together and discuss how we can develop solutions closing the protection gap in the Central Eastern European markets. Thank you very much. Thank you.